Hey guys, it is The Weekend here on Paying Perspective. I am your weekend host, Brendan, and this week we are talking about fledgling pagan event attendees. So our question this week comes from Chaos Kitten Exo, and I will post all the question details at the doobly box below. But essentially what I'm understanding and what you would have heard in the week's videos from the other uh, hosts is that um, Katie, I believe is your name, has spoken about um, recently someone attended a, a ritual that they were at. Um, they identified as pagan but didn't really come with a lot of knowledge and were asking questions through the whole ritual and Katie got stuck with helping them out and sharing all this knowledge and information but doesn't identify as a teacher within the community that they're in. Um, and would like to know how we, like if we've encountered this in our general um, circles and practice and experience and how we dealt with it. Well, uh, so I come from probably actually really experienced background with this kind of thing because I've hosted full moon circles and still host full moon circles within my local community and back in Sydney um, for the Pagan Awareness Network which have been running full moon circles for I think 15 years straight now and they get a lot of first time attendees. I was one many many years ago um, and then I also help facilitate public events um, have taught at witch camps, have all, like, all these opportunities and taught, like, community classes where I interact with new witches all the time. So, I'm going to kind of apply all that experience that I have with that as a teacher, as a student, as a new time witch to begin with, and the best ways to kind of, um, interact and deal and support these sort of people that come into our communities. Uh, I know that for public circles that we used to run many years ago, often there would be a class beforehand. So for anyone that was a first timer that it was their first ritual attending, um, an hour or two before the initial ritual was meant to start, there would be just like a general basics kind of class, an entry to what is grounding, what is circle casting, the elements, kind of essentially outlining what's going to be happening in that night's ritual. And anyone that it was their first time ever attending, that was the opportunity to kind of have that space to be able to explore and interact with um, people of similar interests and similar practice and saves them later in the ritual asking 10 billion questions while the ritual is in process. Uh, another thing that also is very helpful is that as a ritual setup, um, speaking to everyone that's attending and saying that if you do have any questions about what's happening in the ritual, uh, save them for after the ritual. If you'd like to just observe the ritual and um, like but not be present in the ritual itself perhaps creating a space for that. There's um, we often had a buddy system as well so someone may sit with that person outside the ritual and if they have any questions that things that they can see happening in that ritual they can ask and speak to them there. So it kind of was like a run-through process really so you could be like oh what is that person doing? Okay so they're casting a circle we create circles to uh, define a magical space and uh, create a magical container. So it might be like that sort of process. Um, encouragement to attend community classes. So uh, Reclaiming really focuses on the core classes within our tradition. So Elements of Magic is the first class that everyone is encouraged and supported to attend that really runs through the facilit like facilitating ritual Casting space, grounding, centering, elemental engagement, energy raising, uh, being able to ground that energy again, um, raising a cone, drumming, like there's a whole assortment of different uh, parts that come into that whole entire workshop and they can be anywhere from a two day intensive to a uh, seven day long camp path there to community classes that might be over six weeks, like a repeated day over six weeks. And that's an opportunity to kind of get that information. Something that I also thought about while watching everyone's videos and I don't think anyone really kind of covered it is that not everyone's a book learner. 
I know that for me, I love to practically experience things. So be able to um, kind of have like a guide through the process as well. So it might be uh, if like I'm learning a technique for the first time, I often might watch a video about it instead of reading a book um, or listen to an audio file about it where it's kind of explained verbally to me because I seem to absorb oral tradition and um, knowledge as like far more than book knowledge and not everyone has that book nerdy knowledgeness even though like I said last week I'm Ravenclaw my knowledge is kind of diverse I love really practical hands-on learning as well as that really like book um like lots of photos and lots of um instructions and diet like like possible outcomes to what could happen so that my brain focuses and can take all of that information in. So some people are like that as well and this person might be that kind of person that learns better by instruction through a person as opposed to reading books or um, reading websites or something like that. They also might have um, learning conditions so that like learning issues so they might be like dyslexic, they might have ADHD which um, or ADD which might prevent them from actually being able to focus on any of the inf information. Um, they might have issues with memory, so that might affect them. Um, like I said, they might be more of a visual and practical stimulus learner where they need to go through the process themselves to be able to really engage that. And this community kind of really does provide that in um, community classes and ritual space. It's just really allowing that to happen and sometimes people just being able to be present for rituals is a massive learning experience. and. Katie, I want to say, like, you're saying that you're not a teacher in here, but in all reality, all witches, in a way, are a teacher. And by sharing information, we're teaching someone else something new. And you don't need to be a official teacher to really be able to share your wisdom and your knowledge and your experience. It's about that process of being like a buddy or as um, Angel put up in her video about like a sharer. So sharing knowledge and sharing information and wealth and... The other thing is also know your community. There might be someone that is much more prepared and better well versed in this information and dealing with these kind of people that you could introduce them and sometimes that forms lasting bonds and connections and um, I think Angel mentioned it and a couple others that like these people might it might be their first ever time in a ritual space and they're excited and they're nervous and that comes out as asking 10 billion questions and being over excited and over energetic and that can be draining to people that attend but it's having set up systems that can help with that so like I said might be if you know if you a lot of new people are attending that ritual maybe a couple of like an hour to half an hour before maybe doing a bit of a run through and really just talking it all through um, allowing a questioning space after rituals so if I know in our community we tend to feast after we've ritualed so that will allow for that space to have those questions. Oh, why did you do this? Why did you call the element in this direction? Uh, what was the imagery behind this trance piece? And it allows you to kind of deconstruct and digest the ritual that was. Um, and yeah, like it's great having like a wealth of knowledge set behind you. So it might be just like a list of resources that when I was learning, these things were fabulous to me and include a mixed sort of um, set of information. So you might have some favorite YouTubers that you've learned a lot through. Um, you might have some like really instructional books. Like I know that Christopher Penzak, uh, has a lot of his books, like the, um, uh, the Temple, Temple of Witchcraft series, I believe is, uh, it's really set up in like a class format. So that can be helpful to people with, it's got exercises and homework, um, so looking into stuff like that, or even just uh, a lot of people might learn through fantasy. There's some really good books written by witches that um, encompass and will feed into that kind of relationship. Um, like we were talking about last week, the movies and that sort of stuff can help people learn as well. And encourage them to, like, sometimes just connecting them to your local witch or metaphysical or new age stores can also help because they might link them to classes. It might link them to um, other rituals 
uh, to open circles, to learning groups, um, all that sort of thing. And sometimes you might even want to take that extra time to go share a meal with that person and answer any questions they may have. Or, yeah, send them off with resources and get them to come back with any questions they may have from that. Um, just know that, yeah, there's always space and time for these people. We were once fledgling newbies ourselves. So just taking a little bit of patience for yourself. Also just being able to express that, like, your boundaries and your needs as well to other people saying, I'm exhausted by this, like, it's not something that I normally do. Would you mind if I introduced you to someone that is more versed or more experienced in this that could help you out? Um, or that's enough questions for day today. How about next time we meet up, you come back with some more? Or you're free to welcome, like, fr free to email me at this address with any other questions, and I'll get back to you when I can. And sometimes it's just having that connection support welcomes those people into the community. And whether they are like, I <laughs> liked um, what Angel said about like fast food pagans which come in for a quick meal just to kind of experience it, a bit of junk really, like junk food, and then you never see them again, or whether they're the ones that become your regular customers, like the person that will come back to each ritual, you watch them grow and develop and blossom into an empowered priestess that within a few years might be helping facilitate rituals by that same group meeting these same people that have been coming and asking a billion questions and they know how to deal with that now so everything is another like everything is a learning opportunity so just be open to that and maybe there's a lesson for you in here as well and we're eternally students we're always learning we're always growing if we ever get to the point where we think we have nothing else le to learn restart Go back, unpack it all, go to the next level, drop deeper and dive deeper and explore and expand. Or pack it all up and try something new. And that's the thing. Just be open to these opportunities. And sometimes they can form lasting friendships, sometimes they can be fleeting, and sometimes they can go on to be a new magical partner that you meet. I think that is mostly it. Um, I've been loved this topic this week, it's fantastic. And yeah, this, I believe the subs are in for the next couple of weeks as it's our anniversary, which is exciting. Can't believe it's been so long, but it's been wonderful. And I look forward to year eight of the collab and enjoy the rest of your weekend and go, and go out and have another, like a learning opportunity and just experience go have a wonderful experience and then be able to share that with someone else and don't be closed off to questions that may make you question your practice and belief for now much love and blessings and i will see you in a few weeks time Mwah.